Nintendo are your overlords. Yeah. Like, there's no way in heck you didn't look at your game and be like, that's Pokemon with guys. <laughs> like... So- I was born ready. Born. I'm born for this. I was born ready. Ready player one. Ready player two. Underleveled, I oh, choose God. you. <laughs> Is that oh, new, like, use episode level? five. It's super effective. <laughs> yeah, it's super effective. <laughs> Guess it what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> it gets amplified by the algorithm. Mm-hmm. All damage taken. <laughs> Double. I'm Bjorn. You know what? I'm a shark. We can always cut things out, right? Just before we go into that. Who are you? Kieran. Yeah. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Power World, Pokemon, and other Pokemon related stuff. But before that, how's everyone's week been? Anybody feel under level this week? I mean, who is it? Me or you? It's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we talked about this before. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, I know we did. I just. <laughs> I no, no, no. This, I'm putting this at who shove. <laughs> uh, I didn't expect that, like, random thing. Just um, be like, go and talk. But yeah, okay, so for me this past week, I felt under leveled in, like, my ability to relate and kind of build com- or think about community and people or, like, it's so I wish I'd like written down exactly the way to phrase it but kind of thinking outside of myself and being considerate outside of myself I think it was like some stuff happened um, but also I was watching uh, Chef's Table oh no is it Chef's no 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 Ugly Delicious sorry on Netflix what, what is that shit um, it's I can't remember the name but he's like a celebrity chef who owns a bunch of restaurants uh, American Korean guy okay and um, Ugly Delicious is all about food that's delicious but wouldn't con- be considered like good looking food it's 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 not like French cuisine kind it's kind of like my nachos yeah <laughs> exactly you know like your know, nachos nachos are sick um, and in one of the episodes he goes to Italy mm. and is talking to a three-star Michelin chef, but is at this workshop where a three-star Michelin chef hosts a workshop with grand, like Italian grandmothers helping um, special needs or uh, like kids to make pasta and like passing down like information generation to generation. Mm. And that kind of comboed with my own relationships with family and loved ones, all that kind of stuff to just make me feel very unqualified mm. or underprepared for that kind of... It's just not something I think about uh, on the regs. And it made me feel like, hey, are other people thinking about this stuff? Do people go through life always kind of working towards building community? Because I find often I'm just focused on, like, job and success mm. and achieving things as opposed to, like, bringing other people up with me and making other people feel involved and good. I mean, your friend group, but your first community is obviously your family, but then your friend group is your next community, I think you'd say. Mm-hmm. So have you felt like you've been laying like your bigger community, your friend group down in some ways? Okay, so this is actually another thing. Like, how are you guys when it comes to friends versus family? Because in my family, yes, we're family and we will do anything for each other. But 90% of the time, it's it's kind of expected that we build a life outside of the family. Mm. I know some people where family comes first. And I don't know, how's it with you guys? Uh, can I let you go first? Uh, well, with my family, it's very much like family, like you said, does anything for each other. Mm-hmm. And um, there's an emphasis on like helping or like guiding each other in my family like so if you for example me I I'm looking for work I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do and I'm very lucky that I have a family that backs me and will say hey you can like you know we're going to help you out Um, you can stay here and then figure it out they're not like kicking me out not yet (laughs) so just for a bit more context like um, I th- my family's the same, mm. but I'm talking about. Um, Let's cut that. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't I don't know what I'm group. talking about. <laughs> but it's it's more along the lines of like my friend group mm. are who I spend most of my time. With. Like I know people whose family mm. is their like nucleus. That's their friend group as yeah. well. 
Um, so I'm just asking how it is with you guys. Like, is your family, your friend group, are they pretty much the okay. people you like kind of not divulge to, but like that is your first line of defense or your first like you know I'll be honest you guys my friend group is my first line of defense mm. or like if I You're had closer. something happen okay it would first be to you guys I'd probably say mm. but I do still have that with my family it just takes a little bit longer yeah because there's all this like there's all um, like I don't know for me it's harder to broach the topics of mental health and things like that with my family not because they uh, don't care about it but more so because um, it's just like it's harder to explain it to to family than it is there's to also friends. a lot more baggage I think when it comes to yeah. family just, yeah because you know they probably wiped your bum when you were a kid mm-hmm. and your mom and dad will probably always treat you like a kid yeah and but they also know you way better yeah like you got pushed out your mom's VJ bro. yeah they know you pretty well <laughs> yeah. and I guess it's like accepting that, you know, you're always going to be a kid in their eyes, but also you have to make your own steps as well for them to be like, Mm. okay, well, we know you're, you're an adult now, you're trying to adult, we get it. Okay. But they'll always treat you like they're, you know, their little baby. Mm -hmm. And Um, for you, Husha? uh, For me... I can see like two ways where it would have went if I still stayed in Durban I think it would have been a lot closer with like a lot of my family especially like extended wise going towards cousins because mm. uh, I think in like Indians that community is very like big culturally for us it was, it was very hard for like my parents when they moved here from Durban to be away from everyone they ever knew and not have any of their community when they came here and they never really formed any like strong familiar like friend bonds or anyone because very hard coming from a place where there are a lot of Indians to Cape Town where at the time when we moved in like definitely there weren't a lot mm-hmm. like I'm sure we must have been like one of the few hundred we in there so I think I grew up with the way I did was what my friends were became more like my family so I see them as one almost but my parents and my brother are usually the first people that I do go to when I need to talk about things and then afterwards um, I'd go to my friends after that okay so when you guys are kind of going through life and making decisions do you find you think about your friends and family and like is your like do you hope to bring the people around you up or are you mainly just focused on like your own achievements first so I can say that I've also I think I understand what like we're thinking of the same we've been thinking of the same thing just you're phrasing it slightly differently from what I would but the whole idea of bringing up those around you is kind of why it's kind of what I would want to do I'm not I'm trying to do that um not not being like guys come on get up like (laughs) one of the ways that I think about it is like imagine you had to look after yourself imagine you were your parent okay and you had to look after keep this this person help them make decisions help them uh, grow and all that kind of stuff right how would you want to treat yourself would you treat yourself with kindness and in so doing allow yourself to like open yourself up and be more understanding of other people for example but also of yourself so this is a bit of a weird example but basically like working on yourself in order to create a person that is better or not better that's the wrong word but like more conscious and more able to uplift this is what you're thinking of like uplift those around you so it's not all about internal thinking it's not all about I have this goal I need to get it so I get this salary so that I can do this Mm -hmm. but the reality is is that you need money for example like you know like you can't get around it it's just what our society is going towards and money is a very uh, self-centered thing in a lot of ways so I guess it's this is what I'm going to talk about again but balance balancing that so you have to be able to balance your family with your goals your so, your solo achievements they're not selfish they're not uh, these desires and things that you want to achieve are not selfish as long as you are doing it for a reason that is not just to get money or to get fame in my opinion it's more like 
you do it so that you can help others. So if you won ten million dollars, not this example. I know this like, is example, yeah. right? If you won ten million dollars, what would you do with the money? Would you give any of Bet that money to black. your family? Bet it all on black. All on black. All down there. Right? So like, would you? Would you start? Would you? Like, would you think immediately like, oh, I can. I can give like some money to my family, friends, mm. things like that. And I know we've had this conversation before. It was more of a joke, but it was a genuine thing. Like if I won the lottery, I would immediately like start giving out that money. And I would also use it for myself. Mm. Um, so it's a bit of both. Yeah, um, it's a balance. But for you, Hushaf, like so in your day to day, how do you like consider community and consider other people? I guess our community was just for me is just to check in on people mm-hmm. but when you talk about bringing people up like I would say like for the podcast it's something I did think about like uh, I thought about if it becomes successful who from our friend group would we be able to bring on and be able involve and like involve us in our in the ecosystem be able to give people a platform yeah I would you love that just yeah. have law of our friend group everyone <laughs> makes an appearance not everyone only the talented ones <laughs> you know who you are <laughs> but that's uh, when I think of community in that, that sense that's where I would say yeah. that's where my personal life outside of um, checking in on somebody that's how I'm gonna like bring someone up yeah cause you know Cause job not, yeah. if I think of like yeah. my job like I can't really like bring someone up with me Mm. like if i can like i can like recommend people definitely Mm. um yeah you can't just be like oh i got a job now like come on (laughs) i'll just be like come on get get here (laughs) so the idea is like that's what i was trying to say is like this idea of like you you have the job now which is great and then working on yourself not just uh, in the selfish endeavor of, of like for example money keep coming back to money but it is a big thing for me to like uh, it's a big talk, talking point for everyone but like this idea of oh you have the job you get that level of stability and then you you allow that you allow yourself to to work on yourself if that makes sense like oh man it's, I'm you know, I understand, to, I understand where you're coming it. from like if, you're, if you're doing well guys. other people around you will maybe feel better does that make sense mm. I understand where you're coming from but I think you're underestimating how important it is just to be present in yes. the community there you go and how much uh, like support you're able to give one another just by seeing each other yeah. talking to one another uh, being able to learn from people's different experiences yeah. like I, I know we're going to learn a whole bunch from having our first uh, married well second technically but married couple in the friend group and learning from them just being around them no, just, they just asking people how they are like who are you in. talking about uh, oh I mean yeah <laughs> okay that completely okay. I was like is someone now. getting married no so it's, hey, man, I'm not- and you guys will learn from me now being the first person in our friend group who has a 9 to 5 you'll just like by me talking the a proper is, nine is to the five. The proper nine to five. <laughs> You're throwing shit tons of shade. But I, I do like the the presence thing. So I fell into a wormhole of like philosophical things, you know, and I kind of like dove fully into like what's his name? Uh, I can't tell. Eckhart Tolle, the fucking power now, whatever. And I realized that maybe like, you know, that initial like excitement dive in, and then you kind of like. I can use some of this but not all of it or whatever mm-hmm. but now the idea of like being present and conscious is kind of like what I want to do it's just to not be thinking in the, too far in the future or in the past to just be in the moment and then hanging out with your family your friends literally just asking them like how are you what did you do today like okay. you'd be so surprised how like just saying like how are you that's like massive for another person even you know at the end of the day community like small starts things matter togetherness learning through osmosis yeah. from one another I understand where you're coming from where you're thinking skill sets yeah and oh and achievement yeah and that kind of stuff so I ask my parents for advice to you yeah yeah I'll um, go to my dad but yeah that's my like mostly what I've been thinking about and feeling this past week is just being very like self focused and, and kind of not because in my head the eventual thing is like oh if I manage to like get this amount of money I can do these nice things for the people around uh, me yeah but yeah. in that like process of getting to that point I, I'm not taking care of the people around me yeah um, or are, you, just, are, are you taking care of yourself as well 
Yeah, I, I, know, I know what you mean because for like the last however many years I didn't have a job whenever it's people's birthdays I feel so guilty because mm-hmm. I want to get them like something so nice mm, yeah. and now this year I'm so excited and we're like haha I can buy you nice things now <laughs> now you guys get to no, be bad yeah <laughs> with my like, birthday presents <laughs> 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 yeah. I just got you a $500 whiskey <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah that's kind of like your also it doesn't have to yeah, no, <laughs> it also doesn't have to be like giving something it doesn't it, always have to, yeah, first mm, of all. Or like a gift, or uh, it can it be in different ways. It could be, effort, it could ways, be yeah. just showing that showing you Showing up. Okay. Uh, even when you really don't want to go. Yeah. Mm. You Thanks. just try. Thanks you for sharing. open you up, know? you know. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah. That's kind of where I've been at the last week. It's something to think <laughs> about yeah, and... Keep I think, working at it. Yeah, I think you'll watch back our, our advice. Maybe some of it will make better sense. <laughs> oh, you're saying mine <laughs> doesn't make any sense. No, I'm saying who chef doesn't make any sense. I don't even know. Alright, that's it. I'm halving your birthday gift now. Well, you didn't get one, so... I oh, know it. No, no. What is the it. point? <laughs> what is even the point of being friends with you? Guys? I mean, look, your girlfriend raised the bar for gifts. Ah, uh, it's the worst, she, dude. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. She raised the bar. Yeah. Anyways, very cool game came out this past week that's been taking the internet by storm. Two. No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. like uh, Power World. Oh, yeah. How many... Have you guys checked it, managed to check it out? Uh, yes. Yes. I was about to say no, but I watched you've the whole, watched. I watched like an hour and a half video on it. I just, so I, do you want to explain a little what Power World is, Bjorn? Um, whew, okay. I'm trying to sift through the like weird amount of information I crammed into okay. my brain the last few days, okay. but basically it is a game where you are in a open world, semi-open world RPG kind of game hmm. where you collect resources and befriend or collect these things called you beat pals, the shit out of them which and then you <laughs> throw a pokeball at them or it's not called pokeball, a pokeball with inverted you catch it and then you use that pokemon to attack other pokemon well so or do tasks for you kind of uh, yeah you can collect these pals and use them in your base building and resource collecting yeah. and you can advance your technologies and stuff like that mm-hmm. it a lot of people are calling it Pokemon with guns, but I have... I that have, does such a disservice calling it just yeah, Pokemon with guns. Yeah, it's like a whole guns. bunch of different influences. Mm. So for breaking it down, it's yes, it's an RPG, survival, open world... It's um, like a Fortnite-y kind of vibe. Don't... Oh, don't. <laughs> it does. What, what is... The visually, it's got a little bit of... Like, the, more, with the colors, yeah. I will say, like, color-wise and semi building mechanic mechanics it seems like and like you know Fortnite like the movement yeah. I was watching That's the characters it. move when you're hitting the stones literally it just it, guys ah. Fortnite did not invent that movement. no 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 but know, it's the but most like popular it's, it's, reference it's we a have reference but I saw that Ark Survival Evolved was one of the main influences for the actual like core game loop okay. yeah um, which is basically like collect build catch uh, Ark Survival Evolved, as far as I'm aware, is literally the same thing. You get dropped in a world with nothing. Mm-hmm. Survival. You, to, you collect dinosaurs and like ride them and stuff and okay. build bases. Like core game loop, it's the same. Um, and that's you know what else what is the same as what Pokemon. Yeah. Okay. So that's the elephant in the room, right? <laughs> uh, Husha. Yeah. What's... So the design. Well, designs are very like Pokemon like. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. They're... Um. They're yeah. extremely close to. The they're very close to designs. They're very close to it, but they're still different enough that you can get away and it does differentiate. Any like uh, Pokemon capture, no, monster capturing type game. How I usually rate it is, how like, how hard is it for me to build a team? Like, mm. are your designs for your Pokemon, your Pokemon inverted comments, your monsters? Are they all trash? Do they not make like illicit responses of I want to collect you and have and battle with you? Mm. And I think Power World does pass that test where a lot of their creatures are have really fun designs mm. and abilities and are like I really want to use you and see what I can do with you. Whoa. But so here's I was looking at a review, I think on PC Gamer. Nice. And I just want to make sure I get the journalist's name I will name say, right. I'm not the biggest fan of, like, the guns on the Pokemon. I... I mean, but it's I, surprisingly I'll rare, um, yeah. apparently. Like, only a few of them have it. I just don't... You only get to build guns around level 30... 
35, I think it was. So most of the game is spent using bow and arrows, a crossbow, mm. uh, spear. Mm. So it, it is starting like from Stone Age, and as you get and gain more levels, you're quickly progressing faster and faster. And yeah, you can do different things. Like if you've ever played Pokemon Legends Arceus, mm-hmm. it is very much the game is very much like that. But the first, when I played Legends Arceus, like this it's missing something yeah and power world fills in what it was missing by adding in the resource gathering elements mm-hmm. by having you be more involved with your again quote-unquote pokemon in yeah. battle there's <laughs> like a, there's a firefox yeah right? yeah the well, first says, cool. like in battle wise you can take like a, this firefox creature and use it as a flamethrower you can put a penguin into a bazooka thing and fire it one thing i saw uh, watching as uh, asman gold play it you guys know I, I watch you watch action. the world yeah. through the lens of Asmongold no but I'm, I'm, sto- I'm stopping that now no not stopping but like you know anyway uh, the, I was watching him play and he started like building his base and figuring out the mechanics and then he saw this like Pokemon Palmon like across the way from his base that spawned in and it was this big like green dragon looking thing and I was just chilling walking around it's big and he goes over to it and he's like takes his pickaxe and he hits it and it turns around and it just one shots his little like little Pearl Palmon that's there with him and then one shots him and then he spawns back and it's still there and it's just walking around and I was like that's a good game the world is incredibly huge and expanse yeah. and very much lived in I everywhere love- there's creatures box box um, loot yeah. boxes to find resources to gather it's not bare and barren where you'd find in the latest Pokemon games and where they have tried the open world um, yeah. approach I so- like that where it's like you could find like the strongest fucking Pokemon ever at the sorry for swearing at the start of of uh, um, like as you spawn in in power it can kill you and like just take so you out. I I sorry, really li- <laughs> <That's so close. laughs> don't worry at this point they're interchangeable yeah uh, they literally have a Pokedex equivalent called like a Paldex or something. yeah Paldex. um I the one thing I will like in terms of the good stuff I've seen mm-hmm. right the positives of the game is like the integration of your pals in, yes. in Pokemon you just battle yeah, and occasionally it. use HMs to get around yeah. it's it's like you have these crazy abilities that you don't use it sounds like in, strength Push yeah your literally sure. so whereas the pals at like if a Pokemon can make fire, mm. you can use it to make fire. Yeah. yeah. Like, they just... It, it's so well integrated into the game mechanics of the world. So the, the, focus the, the perfect is... example is there's a furnace you get very early where you can go collect firewood and put it into your furnace. Or if you got a fire Pokemon, they can man the furnace yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. And, and then there's, the like... Like, the sheeps can help you build faster. The mm. sheeps are, are a lot, I do a lot of the manual labor in the game. Do you yeah. think it's, like, a bal- more balanced... Like you were saying, like, Pokemon's all just, like, fighting and, uh, and like, special moves. And then this one is more, like... Like, there's there's another aspect of it that they're focusing on where it's, like, oh, Pokemon battling kind of Palmon yeah, battling. Yeah, but... But also they can help you build, an e- like, an empire in a way. But like you also have to remember the... Pokemon is a turn-based battling game. Oh, yes, yeah. Where Power World is, it's real time. What you it's you're... also worth noting, like, what is the intent of mm. each game? Yeah. Like, uh, something we can talk about a bit more later on. Is I is would... Palmon, Power World more exploration? Yes. Pal- Power World is a base builder. Okay. That's what. That's the main thing. sandbox base open world. Yeah. But it's the core game mechanic is improving your base. Yes. And that's where you can get pals to like, like you said help you light fires or and maintain a fire or help you build things faster. There's so, ones that can plant seeds and yeah. ones that can water your flank. Okay, that's cool. But it is literally a slavery sim- simulator as well. <laughs> Do you go up to pals. You beat the shit out of uh, them. There's a hilarious clip that I laugh at, but it's I was watching a review f- an early, like from a week ago or a couple of days ago from Eurogamer. Yeah. And uh, like you can, in, in Pokemon, if a Pokemon like dies in battle it's just faints right you can go restore it yeah I would watch this person take a just a, a blunt like a, a, a branch of a tree yeah. smack a, a pal like 17 times and then it ragdolls dude yeah. it just yeah. like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> it was, you can pick them up and throw them yeah it is so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah speaking it's more pretty, like towards the survival element you eat the pals That's yeah how you which get also food. happens in Pokemon by the way um, but they, they so yeah, you go beat up your pal until you can chuck a quote and unquote like 
Pokeball, which is not a device, capture them and then just put them to work. Yes. It's a weird, it's, it's worth talking about like overall, it is like a weird edgy version of Pokemon. Yeah. So even in the game, they use the word slay for like abilities and stuff. And if you read like the steam page, they are, they like lean into it. Also, they're like, you can put your pals to work and don't worry. Don't worry. There's no laws against overworking them. Dude, also, is... what's it? You can change how hard they're working or how hard you're pushing them. Because, so, for instance, let's say, let's say you get there's this one cat like kind of Pokemon that looks mostly like Meowth mixed with Clefairy. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay. It is a weird Frankenstein Pokemon type okay. thing. But the, you can put them to work carrying things or whatever it might yeah. be. As they're working, their mental health decreases. Yes, they got an S. Um, oh, Start with the S. Not sanitation. Sanity. Sanity, yeah. yeah. You gotta sanity. Yeah, you have you to can... also, like, feed them. Yes, uh, so you have to you feed can... them. You have to make sure they're resting. <sighs> mm-hmm. So it's, it's a lot of management as well. It's, yeah. It is... So the one review I read, they said it is... One of the more fun aspects mm. is figuring out which pals do each task best to mm-hmm. allow you then to also, like... It's kind of got a nice balance of um, strategy game or, like, a bit of a puzzle to it. And if you manage to get past the fact that you are literally turning these creatures, which the developer says is like, apparently pals have intelligence kind of similar to a human being. You are putting them to work as slaves (laughs) and then like proceeding to work them harder until they like, and if one of them gets like, they can get hurt, dude. They can Mm. fracture bones and break stuff. And it affects the mental health of the other pals around yeah. them as well. Because you're it not is, looking after them. So Come if on. you can look past the brutality and stuff, apparently, amazingly fun yeah. game. <laughs> well, like when it comes to the base a- aspect, like there's farming also, like you said earlier, and you get your water Pokemon to do your crops, and their grass Pokemon can do your planting for you. But the goal for your base is to get it like full, fully automated. The same way we try to do with Stardew, where things are just automated. We just come in and just do just plant our seeds. It's the same with that's your goal for your base. Is there is there an end goal? No, no. There's no story. Not like there you is, catch there is a story kind of. Uh, yeah, there's uh, yeah, the dungeons and. So okay. a bit of a yeah. spoiler, I guess, but it's it's like Pokemon in that there are there's practically no real story. Okay. Like you're just trying to maximize your base kind of thing. But okay. there are dungeons with bosses and an evil group that is like. Capturing Palmon, and there's like a, <laughs> apparently there's a so which is yeah, yeah, which is ironic. <laughs> they just capture them, put them in cages. We capture them and put them to work <laughs> <laughs> for no pay, might I add. Uh, oh, but have well, you seen? Are we the bad guys? <laughs> we, we are the bad guys. Have you seen some of the dungeons? Apparently, they're quite cool. I don't they're know. They're massive and so cool. Like the world itself, it's already big, and but then every other dungeon that you find in itself, where you go in huge and mm. beautiful so large Serene. it's like they shouldn't be that big considering how big the base map is damn dude are they generated randomly or is it Mm-mm. like no, 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 no okay it's it's all the same well it's kind of tears of the Kim- kingdom ass yeah okay uh, it's actually a- sorry side note speaking of zelda mm. um <laughs> i would love to talk about the frankensteining of pocket pay which is the company that makes this game and all of their other stuff as well but basically I just want to get the name correct. In oh, Craftopia. In in um is it Craft? Yeah, in Craftopia, there's one of the like basic creatures is a goblin. Also, a thing where you can like put creatures to work. Mm. Uh, and I think you wanted to talk a bit. It was about animals. They used animals though. No. Okay. So there's goblins in Craftopia, and it looks exactly like a blue version. I just want to get the name right. Of in the penguin. Uh, a bacob bacoblin in um oh, zelda. from zelda it's literally the same model and everything really? but it's like just the um skin tone has changed it's and i think <laughs> i really want to see that did yeah, that, that the, happens dude in games but it's it's there's a difference between like taking something and changing it up yeah. or accidentally ending up with the same product That's true. no joke one-to-one blue skin like where's the bacoblin is red it's and is it, is it being quite controversial or is it just no because Craftopia got very mixed games. reviews it was a very buggy game but they took a lot of the core things that they did well and they improved on that for Power World where so it's Power World in its first day a million copies mm-hmm. it's insane you know that like you can make and sell assets right 
So you make like a 3D model. Yeah, but that's for, the, for your Unity engines. For Unity, for like a whole bunch of different e- engines. And that uh, people can just like kind of go, what's that? Uh, not ArtStation, what is it? There's like different sites There's you can go different on. There's different marketplaces, CD Trader or whatever. And put but it in your game. Remember, so you we're talking about Nintendo. There's no way yeah, in sorry. heck I that know. Nintendo <laughs> uploaded their assets. I'm thinking of like Unreal or something. And here's actually, ah, oh, dude. So Craftopia, right, is the previous game from uh, Pocket Bear. Mm. They, that is that is a Frankenstein monster of game mechanics from other games that they just <laughs> super glue, but they didn't change anything. Yeah. It is genuinely just, they see a mechanic or they see something and they just take it and add it. Yeah. And people, like the core fans of Crafto- Craftopia love the game. Yeah. It is buggy. It does like kind of mix and match a lot of things, mm. but it is um, like a fun game as far as I can tell. I think, I think it's fine. But you also, there's a difference between taking something and changing it a bit yeah. versus taking a whole mechanic and just being like, this is now an hour game. That's Even true. if you're adding it to something else, it is still a one-to-one. How do you feel about you, that? You see it a lot, though, in like a lot of games where it's just... Like, Genshin Impact is technically a Zelda rip-off, Damn. mechanic-wise. Now we're going off to the Genshin community. <laughs> <laughs> well, Which is something people actually compare to Craftopia. Because um, I think Craftopia then took from Genshin. Um, yeah, just I feel one like the, isn't it? Isn't that just everyone takes from everyone kind of thing? Not saying it's right or wrong, but it just, it's just what seeing happens. what works and just going with the times, which is not too bad. But you should try to put your own twist on things. No, yeah. Otherwise, you're just getting a reskin things. So it's like if Dark Souls makes a game and then another company makes a game, but it, it marks it as a Souls like. What is is that okay? I think it's okay. If they're not taking like the same things and recoloring, it's like oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. But it's just so like you, yeah, it's like yeah. how Hollow Knight is a Souls game. Basically, it's like if someone, the first podcaster back in the Stone Age. Right? <laughs> you mean just radio? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there was no radio on this. They, they, they gathered at a meeting place, some sort of cave-like structure, and they were like, "I have story to tell." Okay. <laughs> Live your life, King. And then it's like, cool, you know, they start telling the story, and everyone gathers there once a month. They go to the spot. Whoever survives the week or the month. So just story. And they listen to the storyteller, yeah? Okay. So the original podcast. Are we not just doing what they did? Are we just not No. But we're telling our own stories. We're talking about Palmon. Everyone else is talking about Palmon. Are we not taking that content and just being like No, we're not copying them like word for word and changing one word. Sorry. I'm not saying we are. (laughs) I'm just (laughs) bringing it up. You're trying to bring up an analogy. But no, it is very different. Do you think Power World would have been as popular if it wasn't for that shock factor of seeing creature Pokemon no. creatures with guns. So I, uh, I think, I'm trying to remember where I saw or heard it, but essentially it falls into that same category as Rick and Morty mm. or Happy Tree Friends. Like it is shock factor, but honestly, I underneath think, it, I think there will still be a core group of people that play Palmon for a long time. But Craftopia, still in early access, three years later. Hasn't, isn't a finished game has a core group but most like there aren't crazy amounts of people playing it yeah. right now uh, Power World is in a is in early media access. cycle is, it got released in early access yeah. yeah and I think the hype is there it'll continue for a bit but honestly I'm be willing to bet that next or it's, it's not gonna ever leave early access I think that's it's always gonna be there you think I'm, I'm could be proven wrong, mm. but just speaking about Pocket Pay itself, the company making it, Craftopia, still in early, early access three years later, still a buggy mess. Yeah. Talking about like uh, just taking um, mechanics from different people and super gluing them together, their previous games, Over Dungeon, is almost a carbon copy of Slay the Spire. It's like a um, card, tower, yeah, card tower defense kind of game. Uh, and then before well, you also had AI art imposter mm-hmm. which is it's among us <laughs> but one put per- like you put in um, topics into an AI generator three of the people in the lobby have the actual like prompt mm. and then one person doesn't and they have to kind of guess based on the art that they see but the mascot the the characters you play as in the game are the Among Us characters <laughs> but they have octopus legs Among and ears. Us. It's like this company itself have a track record of 
like using other people's assets. It's so when you talked about earlier, like how everyone kind of steals or whatever. This company, every single one of their games to date, is it's way too obvious where they copy where, yeah, the stuff. Where your inspirations yeah. are coming from, mm-hmm. and I think that's why I have like a bone to pick because it's this is a trend. It's not. It's not like a yeah. once off there's a new popular mechanic. It is yeah. something that they do. But I wonder when they have so many eyes on them if it's going to be different because it's not like the other games where they came out was popping off for like a lot of people talking mm-hmm. about it. Now they have a game where a million people have downloaded it. A lot of the most popular streamers, content creators on YouTube are playing it, talking about it. And you can power all the stuff is there are bugs in it. I've seen quite a few bugs. They, there are things that need to be straightened out but Mm -hmm. it's an early access so let's just wait and see where it goes from here hopefully it makes Pokemon be like Mm. I do have some raise the dragon out of them (laughs) we're gonna make the best Pokemon game this is what I was thinking this is what I was thinking like could it be because whenever a capture a pocket monster you know game comes up people always like is this the Pokemon killer is this what Mm -hmm. we've been waiting for because Pokemon has been unchallenged for way too long and they've gotten way too lazy Digimon tried (laughs) We, we talked about this on our like WhatsApp group but like Pokemon I, w- I think Digimon was always like a fallback for Game Freak mm. um, still a great universe. good yeah cool idea cool universe but it's also Pokemon they had with Pokemon, guns, Pokemon just so you know <laughs> middle grain um, I mean but I actually want to know because I haven't really played too many po- like collecting monster kind of games um, have you guys ever come across it before I play I've played quite a few because I'm always I've always been looking for the next thing because Pokemon these last few years have kind of like lost me it's been hard to be a Pokemon fan just because they're getting very not just repetitive but it's getting easier the games are becoming much more easier much more hand holding Um, gameplay and mechanic wise they're not switching up enough I know they Mm -hmm. tried for the new one for Scarlet and Violet um, doing more open world and having it where you can do which go to whichever gym that you want um which is not even you can because it's still um each gym is set at a certain level right. so it's not like it, it uh, uh, adjusts to so your level scale. yeah okay. so it's still making you go in an order basically so you, like yeah. maybe you're good enough to skip and do one that's slightly have uh, um higher than you but it's still following that same format but it they're doing enough different things where it's showing that they're trying something so I'd really hope for the next generation they go full gung-ho and do something like, completely different just like get like someone to come in and be like look at the designs of the Pokemon before they just send them out it, no it's not about the designs of the Pokemon it can't, it I'm is. talking about gameplay and mechanics like I... gen 1 to 4 take those and study them again and then make Pokemon not the same as those but like but that sort of vibe I know that's just nostalgia talking and like mm. uh, when I was a child but like o- objectively as an adult as a grown man I'm but if you're the just new the Pokemon to both of you right now I'm not <laughs> they're not it just I'm hang on I'm but if you're just there for the creatures why don't you try different uh pocket monster games if you just want cool creatures because uh, there's not, plenty of it's not of just un- the creatures but it is a big part for me like I want to catch something and be like I love this the look of this Pokemon it looks cool like you get an Alakazam or like even an Abra is cool right for me or like Shelder pretty lame right from the sleep. Cloister badass vagina like, vagina well also it could be <laughs> ga- a ghastly that's inhabited a shell mm. We'll talk about that on the theories episode, which eventually we'll make. But what I'm saying is, like, I want to, like, even the Palmon things, they kind of look better than the, the latest Pokemon. Do you want to experience seen. the same kind of, like, stuff you experienced when you were playing those games for the first time? Yeah, but just in HD for... So it's nostalgic. <laughs> it is, like, it's okay if it's nostalgia, but I it is, like... Yeah. I got the nostalgia glasses. I am on the opposite side. Yeah, where, where, where are you? Kieran kind of made my point for me in that, like, you were the right age to be playing Pokemon. True. And you're talking about the, the formula getting stale, but yeah. Nintendo doesn't want it. Like, that's not the point. The, it's not Nintendo Game Freak. Is it that whole thing of, like, it, if it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix So, but no, think about who they're trying to, like, suck in. Yeah, kids. Yeah, they're kids. They're trying to so it's, appeal to... There's a really generation. cool uh, YouTube channel called Game Maker's Toolkit, and they did a video where they wrapped up all the, view, the uh, video games they reviewed, or, like, everything they did in 2023. And in it, he at the end, he's talking about 
a game called uh, Jusson, which is Jusson. it's a it's a very cool indie game. Yeah, I think it's indie, but you are a um, rock climber, and it's all about like climbing up this massive like mystical mountain kind of thing. Uh, similar kind of vibe to Journey, but like very interesting game mechanics. Point being, he goes on a whole spiel about it and certain mechanics that he likes and doesn't like. And at the end, he rounds out his video by saying, but these things I don't like mm. aren't necessarily things that the developer wanted to put in at all. So for instance, developer intent is super important. Like Pokemon, Game Freak, Nintendo, mm. they want to attract younger, like they wanted, what's the age range? Like five to 10 is their yeah. main, that's their target audience. That's who they want to attract. And I think that's what the Pokemon games still do an amazing job of, while still us older people catching strays. <laughs> yeah. And Pal World, I think, is targeted at like a preteen teenager that 40, loves Fortnite. 14 to 21. Yeah, somewhere there that also probably watches like Rick and Morty and stuff like that. It's, it's edgy Pokemon. Like mm. developers, they find a target audience and like they hone in on that. And that's why like... You can make all the complaints you want about Pokemon, it's but at the end of the day, yeah. it's a, like they are getting the people that yeah. they want. It's a household name. Anyway. So for us that want that Pokemon experience, but better, we either have to make our own game, <laughs> or we have to find new things to move on to, because Game you know, Freak aren't going to change for us. Ironically, I would argue that even though their target audience is definitely a younger generation, our generation is a huge target audience as well. Mm-hmm. The ones that grew up with it. I mean, you think about Pokemon cards, how expensive is that shit? Yeah, if you look at... Dude, people are really... If you look at the competitive side of Pokemon, it is still people around 20s, or my, like, 90s kids who are really into the competitive scene. Yeah. I'm not sure about the card game scene, because I don't really follow that. Yeah. But I would, I would imagine that it's I mean, similar. dude, the it original Pokemon cards, the base cards, base set, uh, they're worth fucking tons of money. Little but besides kids. money, no, no, I know. Besides I know. money, like I'm saying, there is a market there. Of like, yeah, um, but when beyond. it comes to com- competition, you're yeah. automatically no, gonna you're right, like, you're right, yeah. target older people. That wa- that's but that is a like self-imposed challenge, mm. right? Yeah. It's not it's not part of the core game. Mm. But that, but I, but I think like that um, demographic are the people who play the game longer. I, I, but they, they don't care like yeah, once you I, I don't 14, they, don't care. they don't care about as long as somebody up is buying the game that's their job done yeah. basically I, I don't know the stats exactly I'd love to look them up but how many people bought Scarlet and Violet uh, it's, so it's gone up every year it's, not, it's gone up it's every year because there's more kids every year yeah. that's how it goes um, so as much as it sucks I think we might have to move on to like a new game have you tried <laughs> any Pokemon clones before Digimon no. World 3 <laughs> that's not a clone it's not Pokemon. a clone but it's it's uh, close enough mm-mm, I it's haven't. one of the best games ever made for the PS1 in my opinion dude how was it I don't know who Chef I like I can't say for certain whether I've tried a clone I looked up some names of clones mm. I none of them were familiar to me though I, I've done two Yokai Watch was really popular and a lot of people were like oh this is the one I really think the community just gaslighted us onto believing it was good yeah. I don't think it was as good as everybody tried to make it out to be what is the premise of yokai is it the it's same it's spirits basically spirits. instead of monsters that you're capturing and using um, yeah pretty much but and then the other one really thinking outside the box there. <laughs> the other one which I really enjoy and I follow it is called Nexomon Nexomon yeah some uh, I think it started as a mobile game or it went to mobile but it's on Steam it's really fun it's same it's it's basically like a poke, it, you know, it is a Pokemon clone yeah. go into grass capture Pokemon your poke, Pokeballs are actually like trapezium like permas okay. that open up captured <laughs> really 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 fun because nice it's the storytelling in it is so much better than Pokemon mm-hmm. and the last one that came out Nexomon 2 it came out when was um COVID? 2020 <laughs> four years uh, it looks it's very pretty it's very pretty the, 2020 and the designs March, 2020. are so like and the legendary four monster designs ago. absolutely trump what's been coming out le- recently but Nexomon 2 pro- told like probably one of the best stories across all Pokemon clone games that mm. I've ever told I, I got really invested into the characters and that's not something I usually do that Would usually you recommend happens. it as a good alternative to Pokemon 100% yes okay sweet I might actually then go pick it up or something Seems awesome. Yeah, there's two. There's Nexomon. I think the first one was called Extinction. 
No, next one extinguishes the second one, and then there's next one on the first one. Some of the characters return in the second one, but um, Relatively you can. separate stories. Yeah. Okay, sweet. You Kieran, besides Digimon <laughs> World Three, I haven't played a lot of. I I've played a lot of Pokemon games and mm-hmm. ROM hacks and stuff like that. Um, but I haven't played. What are they called? Pokemon clones. Clones. The closest thing would be Digimon or like freaking Yu Gi Oh or something okay. like the card game. Um, then actually ROM hacks, mm-hmm. right? So what ROM hacks have you played? Love good ROM hack. Do you yeah. do you have to want to explain to people who don't know what ROM hacks what they are? Aren't you here? So ROM hack is basically like they take the original game, so it could be emerald, it could be silver, it could be red, and someone edits the game. What's that called? It's, um, I guess it's, it's they modding. Modding, yeah. They mod modding. the game to make the game either more difficult or to make um, certain Pokemon appear in random places or randomize it or change the way that the game plays. And or make it just a completely new game. Or a completely also. new game, yeah. One of the popular things at the moment is Nuzlocking. Well, it's been popular for a while. But that's not a ROM hack. It's not a ROM hack, but lots of Nuzlocke, Nuzlocke ROM hacks. Oh, wait, actually... Because they're actually, more difficult. You can make it a game can, mode. You can yeah. make it a game mode that has built in mm. the rules of a Nuzlocke into the ROM yes. hack. Um, Bjorn, do you want to take this one and explain what a Nuzlocke, Nuzlocke is? Nuzlocke. Nuzlocke. Okay, Dude, a Nuzlocke... tell them about a Nuzlocke. <laughs> the ones that we can never get past the second year. Fucking Wingo. Um, for those that don't know, Wingo a sucks. Nuzlocke is essentially when you play a Pokemon game but you impose certain rules onto it. So for instance, um, some of the more common ones are you can only catch one Pokemon per route, mm-hmm. and there's something, how, on average, are they what, like 30 to 40 routes a game, somewhere there, yeah, including so limited dungeons. In, um, what you 20, can encounter. 20, 25, okay. like, excluding you have to catch yeah. the Pokemon that you encounter. Yeah, you catch the first Pokemon you encounter, on that you're only allowed to catch one per route, you have to give them a nickname, and if that Pokemon dies, or oh, sorry, if it faints, then it technically has died and you need to release it yeah. or never use it again. So you can't um, heal it at the Pokemon Center and reuse it. Yeah. You can't heal it with a revive or anything. So it's that's gone. a Nuzlocke, and some people build that into ROM hacks. Okay. Then there's also things like no healing, no TMs. Yeah. It gets But complicated. that's that's the thing getting into like hardcore. Yeah. But your basic is that stuff. So yeah. what ROM hacks have you played? Uh so Fire Red. And Leaf Green is that a ROM hack? Or is those, that those oh wait, game. did you Nuzlocke those games? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I was thinking of. Wait, hold on. Did you? Oh. You just thinking <laughs> that the no, remakes I, I are ROM hacks? No, I just realized. No, man. I, I, there's there's one because that, Fire Red and Leaf Green are remakes. Okay, yeah. I'll give it. I'll give you the name. You guys. Wait, is Leaf Green a remake? Is yeah. a remake of Green. But there are ROM so hacks the of Leaf, Leaf Green, Green and Fire Red were redos of Gen One. Yeah. But Gen One is uh, yellow, no. blue, and red. Yes, but the first two games were red blue and, and red and blue. Yeah. Um, so where does green come in? Because it was yellow. Okay. Yeah, then it was yellow. I don't know. Where, actually, then you don't had know. sapphire and no, no, no. Um, then you skipping Gen two, yeah. which was oh, yeah, gold, was silver, okay. crystal. Yes. Then Gen three, which was um, ruby, sapphire, emerald. emerald. Gen four, diamond, platinum, um, pearl. Mm-hmm. Gen five, black and white. Gen six. X and Y, Gen 7, Sun and Moon, Gen it's 8, Sword right and Shield, Gen 9, Scarlet and Violet. Okay, and then all the like remakes in between all those. Yeah, as well. so we've only we've got up to Gen Generation 4 on remakes, mm. which are the latest one, which was uh, Bright Diamond and Shining Pearl, or that maybe the other way around. Okay, yeah. but sorry, Kieran, your, your uh, ROM hack? So is- the one that I am most familiar with and it's the first one on the list ironically is Pokemon Emerald Kaizo apparently difficult as all it's heck. super difficult and the reason I know it is because there's a YouTuber called Pokemon Challenges there's lots of YouTubers that do this uh, he Nuzlocks and plays through the game uh, the most hard versions of the games so a- aka another Pokemon uh, player has changed the AI changed the, the Pokemon movesets changed the Pokemon teams gyms have the encounters that you get are more difficult it could be anything from uh, uh, in that realm of like just cha- changing the game so that it's not it's not Emerald, it's Emerald Kaizo, and the whole point of it is to be more difficult. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't played it, but I've watched Pokemon <laughs> Challenges play a lot of it. So basically, I played it right. I've watched a lot of YouTubers play through the game. Um, that's an example of a really what I would consider good ROM hack, where it's like designed to be more difficult but I like more hardcore mm-hmm. games like so that's taking better. Pokemon and aging it up for us yeah. essentially and you Husha? 
I played a lot of ROM hacks because I think ROM hacks is what sustained my uh, love for Pokemon because it's obviously like like you said brought it up to a level where it's more harder mm. more grindy mm. I have to think about what I'm actually doing I'm not just spamming uh, one yeah, move the entire time you have to plan for the gym yeah like, what am I gonna make do sure here? I'm going in with enough resources to heal mm. so I think uh, I'll talk about the two most famous ROM hacks quickly both of them got cease and desist from Nintendo because they got so popular and Nintendo it's like Nintendo like you're embarrassing really? us right is now is one of them Uranium or something Uranium. like that yeah so Uranium was the first one that uh got the cease and desist it became so it was really popular because they also had a online online service where you could trade online with other players mm. very big community did they have unique pokemon all fake okay, yeah yeah uh. so fake fake pokemon is a uh, the term used in rom hacks when they create their own region and pokemon okay. so uranium was completely all fake uh super another again a lot of like the rom hacks do storytelling really well mm. and this was one where the main story took you to like around level 80 so it was very long i don't know how many hours it takes you to do it but um you can still get pokemon uranium it's no longer supported for online obviously so you can't yeah. trade um with people anymore uh, if you can find it i highly recommend the other one was pokemon prism which mm-hmm. took uh which used gen 2 graphics and put a lot of i think it was up to generation 6 pokemon into the game completely new region um, no fakey monster, all all the Pokemon from Gen One to Six, but it told a a father son type story of a son trying to catch up to his father. Very emotional storytelling, very good. Mm. Again, so good that it got cease and desist. They were like, "You guys, yeah, like you said, they're, you're making." Yeah, they're like, "This is like too good. Why are you guys doing this? this? Stop doing our thing better than us." Actually, I'm so curious as to why, like Pal World, which is there's an interview of I think the founder of Pocket Pair where someone brings up the meme of like Pokemon with guns and he says like oh that's such a surprise like I we never, believe it yeah we, can't, we thought it would be more like compared to Ark because that's our inspiration yeah. and I feel like I feel like if you it's a Japanese company <laughs> Nintendo are your overlords yeah. like there's no way in heck you didn't look at your game and be like that's Pokemon with guns <laughs> like, so like there's no way you can not no. clock that and they didn't you read in... it's not a Pokeball <laughs> didn't you read Did, yeah, what's it called the capsule device I think device. it's called a something sphere yeah. so, come on pal sphere but like yeah. I don't understand how that flies mm. when, when they're like Nintendo are n- known Pocket Bear is a small ish yeah. studio but like Nintendo are known for just chucking lawsuits at people and Pal World is on their home turf True. And they haven't received like. Well, I think for well, like ROM hacks, they're taking the base game. So obviously for um, like for Prism, um, they took one of the Gen two games. I think it was Gold, and they built it from there. Uh, you know, changing the areas, making the new region, mm. in, uh, creating With sprites the for assets. the new new assets. Yeah, because they had to create new sprites for the newer Gen Pokemon that okay. obviously onto the game. But Uranium did not have was not was actually not a ROM hack. As in, it wasn't modded from like a Pokemon Emerald. It was built from the ground up. It was built up. from ah. the ground up. But they called it Pokemon Uranium. Okay. Uh, dude, if they had just gone like Pocket Monster Uranium or yeah. something, they might have actually flown. Maybe, yeah, not, not have like Pokeball, like change whatever the capturing device is to whatever. It, yeah, probably would have been fine, but you're using yeah. the Pokemon name. Um, yeah, so anything that would give you some sort of monetary gain. But the thing is, they name, this is all like, all you. these are all free. Like the the developers made no aren't making any money off it because okay. it wasn't like you were going onto Steam and purchasing the game. Yeah. Or anything. You're just going to their website and downloading the game and you play. That's it. Nintendo is notorious though for like sending out litigation. Like there was a I don't know if we've talked about this, but a brief point in time where they tried to essentially monetize everyone's YouTube videos on po- on Nintendo um, stuff. Wow, so dude, that's so crazy. For instance, like, if you as no a Let's ways. Player wanted to upload a video of you playing through a Nintendo game, first it would have to get, like, sent through the Nintendo pipeline, okayed, come back out, dude, then no it's way. only public, and then any revenue from that video, 25% immediately goes to Nintendo. That's theft. I'm also not sure if you're allowed to use Poke, um, not Pokemon, Nintendo music, licensed music as like background music. That's crazy. I think it, it's still not allowed. Because if I remember correctly, I think Mario Kart players uh, who upload to YouTube still come across a problem where the soundtrack is getting like picked up by Nintendo and they're getting, um, is it DMC8? No. Yeah. Yeah, DMC8. Yeah. 
<laughs> Run DMZ. <laughs> um, but okay, dude, that's crazy. Yeah. But if I think if I were to like recommend a ROM hack for people to try out, I think Pokemon Legends of the Arena uh, is probably the best. It does. It um, it's one of the first ROM hacks I've played where the character you played is a character. They're not silent, hmm. so they have their own um, you know yeah. personality and stuff. And they do the cute little thing where the little box pops up with like their faces whenever like a person is talking. Yeah. Um, I actually want to ask then, in terms of Pokemon, um, how do we fix it? How do we fix Pokemon, for like to make it an, a game for us to play? Because ROM hacks are cool and stuff, but like, how do we take Pokemon and it. just make it Can available to us? Go for it. Pokemon. <laughs> go look at Elden Ring, the world, and take that. Put Pokemon in Elden Ring. The world Hold of on. Elden You're Ring. just doing exactly what yeah. Pocket Pen yeah. does. No, 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 no. Do that. And then go back to Gen 1 to 4 and look at how you made those Pokemon. Apply that. And then make it deeper than just water beats rock, leaf beats, whatever. Make it like, like even go to Palmon and be like, hmm, how are they making it different? And take aspects of like what will entertain beyond just battling getting to the the elite whatever give give like more rpg uh quests and other other things to do beyond that and that would be probably integrate the pokemon more into the world yes yeah right so, so that's why you go look at palmon yeah they did a pretty good job <laughs> no guns no guns no guns i think like i said i think i said it earlier but legends of rcs they were on the right track when they were trying what did it do differently from the formula so firstly you you go out you you have an open world to go out with and it's the same as power world where you can just like throw pokeballs anything Mm. because it's because you get like quests where like you looking like the biggest worm pole or whatever you can find to bring it back so it rewards you also for capturing a lot of different pokemon and a lot of the same Mm. uh also you can you could ride your creatures or um fly with the one with your one bird so again similar to power world but it wasn't as um open as it is with power you can do it wherever with any creature yeah so i think that's a good base that they have there and if I was looking now, how are we going to build on that? I think having your character make decisions and having those decisions affect the world yep. might be pretty cool. Side quests as well. So, for instance, in Pal World, where you have this antagonist group that is, like, attacking villages... Yeah. Are you talking about Team Rocket? No, no, no. It's their, it's their oh, team. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. But, like, Got it. not just having you, your responsibility... Because those people in-game will attack you just immediately on site... But having the ability to make choices and you like get to them. become to- team rocket. yeah, or you essentially become team rocket. I think as well, you know. Obviously. If I was gonna dumb it down, I was like Skyrim meets Pokemon, basically. Some like a Bethesda game meets Pokemon. Okay, that's well, kind of what I said about Elden Ring. Yeah, a are you saying Bethesda like the, the like when I said Elden Ring, I mean like the the tree, like make it three D first of all. Don't make it. Like, well, they do. They already well, done, done 3D, that. But like, yeah. make it like that level of like. Wait, so I don't. I don't need it to be super realistic. You, they okay. can keep the style that they're doing now. Yeah, keep it cute, but make it. Make the world like feel big yeah. and expansive, big, and like, lived in. Make it feel like I actually real. do yeah. have a choice to go wherever I want. Because in Scarlet and Violet, which is the last, I didn't get the DLC because Scarlet and Violet was so disappointed. But I did get Scarlet and Violet. Mm. They did do the open world, but it's barren. There's almost like nothing. Like you, there's just grass and grass, a tree maybe. Yeah, a it ruin. is barren. It's so boring to look at. Would it's, you? Would you want like uh, you can. So you know you were talking about earlier, like in the Pokemon Now that they're making, there's no like, it's all like um, level cap. So every gym is like this level, that level. So they they make you kind of like go from Maybe, this gym yeah. to that gym. We take that away, and what would you do? So would you scale, scale so, everything? Yeah, a it? lot of a lot of Pokemon ROM hacks do this where. If you're like at level five, the trainers or the wild Pokemon around you are maybe three or four levels above it. Yeah. So you can never over level for any any that is, area. That's cool. I like so that. it's always adding like that little edge to the game where it's like you're not gonna go somewhere and just knock yeah. around the trainers. Would you want it to have an element of open world where like you could find and stumble upon a really powerful Pokemon like at the beginning of the game, or would you? Oh not yeah, that'd be like amazing. Like sick, you accidentally right? stumble upon a legendary, you're like oh I need to maybe train and then yeah, come back. and obviously you can't catch it immediately, but like you're like oh shit. If I get or maybe lucky, you, like if you're lucky, throw one Pokeball. I like that. Know. I like that idea. Yeah. So and then also bring in some, make me hit some trees and farm. <laughs> Do you want? So you want? Make resource? me build a little base for my Pokemon. Build a little like sanctuary for them. 
Nintendo, reach out. Obviously. Yeah, I feel like that might be going like reach a step too emails. far. I'm just thinking like how they can just step it up a little bit yeah, right yeah. now. Okay. In an ideal world, I want the Pokemon to feel useful. The whole point of Pokemon is like, oh, they're all your best friend. Like, <laughs> and and the trainers True. in the world of Pokemon that treat their Pokemon like slaves or like trash essentially. Yeah. Team Rocket. Yeah, kind of. And like those are the bad guys. So having a Pokemon world or Pokemon game where you engage with and interact with. You don't necessarily have to have base building. Mm. But if you, for instance, your home where you live with your mom and then every single game, Mm -hmm, like imagine there's a garden and you can do certain things. Like you're not going to build the whole house, but you can do certain improvements and just center it around the act of Pokemon and battling. You want a hub world? Kind of. I think that would work genuinely just hub town. they do have actually like bases and stuff in certain Pokemon games yeah like see but they're not but it's, like it's, 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 just, it's just decoration yeah, now. which is hella boring yeah. like make everything feel more integrated I think that's why I'm saying go look at Elden Ring game of the year <laughs> game of the year and see how they did their hub world and integrated it maybe you do that I don't know <laughs> if, the, if Game Freak developers are listening or let Elden Ring the developers of Elden Ring from software make Dark Souls Pokemon <laughs> Clip it. That's gonna Clip it into But would you want an ultra realistic Pokemon? No, it doesn't have to be ultra realistic. But so would you keep it like the same style they have now, yeah. but do it like a Legend of Zelda the gameplay? Maybe maybe a little bit more realistic, but it doesn't have to be like crazy. Yeah, like I'm that's I'm not really thinking about it in that sense. I'm thinking about it in like just like the game the gameplay. Yeah. Mm. So what are you guys least favorite Pokemon and why? Least favorite. Yeah. This is always tough. There's so many I don't like. <laughs> I can actually give you. Do you one have like one for like for each generation? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no, no. Okay, think think okay, about all your goals. So yeah. mine actually comes from when we were doing our Nuzlocke because yes. we've tried a Nuzlocke of an Emerald yes. so many times and we fail because we like to be fair can be a bit careless mm-hmm. can rush it but <sighs> there's Get too hyped and then I was originally gonna say nose pass in the first gym with Roxanne. <sighs> The pro- but it's not nose pass that was a problem. Whoa. It was because we always caught a piece of shit wing girl. Wing girl? That can, is... Yeah, wing girl's the worst. <laughs> and for some reason, it just it's had the worst, like, special attack stat. Yeah. And it has it has glass defense. It's Even Pelipper, like, falls off so quickly. Yeah. So the, the frustration we faced in the past with a wing girl against mm. that specific nose pass yeah. is... It has a special place of hate in my heart. I don't think it's necessarily a bad Pokemon, but because it is just stumped us so many times and it's, having it's literally so anything times. else would have gotten us further, mm-hmm. that is why Wingull specifically like holds my ire. There might be a different Pokemon <laughs> that like I hate more, but off the top of my head, yeah. that's it. Okay, well, Did you add Wingull or Nosepass? I'm so confused. Wingull. Okay, Wingull. Nosepass because it let me down. Because you, <laughs> Nosepass <laughs> uses Rock Dune every yeah, time. Yeah, every and time. Like, well, and Wingull is a flying. It's flying, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's my least favorite. Um, least favorite, if we could go back to our Nuzlocke as well, I might as well mention, honorable mention, uh, Puchena. <laughs> Why did Puchena now, Puchena is cool design, right? Looks cool. Mighty Ena looks real sexy. But it has, it has really good, like, uh, a special ability. I forget what it's called. Uh, where it raises your attack. But it's got such a terrible moveset until it evolves. And it always also failed us on the Nuzlocke. Then you got Mr. Mime. Classic. Terrifying. If you see him in the live action, fucking cover your eyes, dude. He's horrific. Um, and then I would say Gen 2 probably... Wait, are you doing one for every single Gen? No, I'm just thinking of, like, one more to see if I can squeeze one out. But, like... <laughs> um, damn! You didn't. You uh, I don't have to do this, but yeah. shuckle. Sorry, that little freaking tortoise thing. Yeah, yeah the no, no, no. Oh, the, get out he, of here! He's like a um, a fire type. No, he's a normal. Um, you know, he's a rock. Little like uh, it's got like a red shell, bunch of holes with tentacles. A yellow guy. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like a piece of play doh sticking out of a shell of a tortoise. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So Don't that's like your favorite. And my <laughs> my specifically is Dunsparce. Yes. Because it it looks it's a, it it looks like a lame Pokemon. The same way um Feebas and Magikarp are where it gives off that lame vibe. I think Magikarp is sick. Oh, so I was Magikarp is one of my favorite. But yeah, Dun Dunsparce 
because it, it looks so feeble and weak and its moveset is trash. Unreadable. <laughs> <laughs> and its name. Sorry. So, so the thing is, it looks so lame and this is the time before internet when I was playing it. So I, I, I looked at it, I was like, this has got to have a sick evolution. Mm. And so this is generation two Pokemon Gold. I think I trained it up to like level 40 and it just never evolved and then eventually I saw the Pokedex. It doesn't. There's just another Pokemon after it it doesn't evolve all and it made me hate it so much like you are such a trash ugly looking Pokemon you look like you evolve into something amazing yeah and um you don't <laughs> and then in the newer generation they finally gave Dunsparce an evolution and it's called Dun Dunsparce and it's just a longer <laughs> version of Dunsparce it's the exact same Pokemon just like they added an extra layer into it it's like a sausage dog yeah, they, just, yeah, like, they <laughs> just like stretched it basically I was like so stupid like, you could have made you could have made it a normal dragon yeah which um again going back to my favorite wrong, wrong hack Legend of Arceus they actually did right by Dunsparce and gave him an amazing evolution they did they like they added new evolutions and mega evolutions yeah. Yeah. Okay, Legend wait of you said Pokemon Arceus there Legends of Arceus I mean Legends of the Arena sorry Legends yeah. of the Arena Legends of the Arena is a ROM hack, hack. Yes. of yes. which game uh, Bolt from the Ground Up Bolt from the Ground Up okay yeah. awesome so we have Dunsparce we have what did I say Poochie yeah. yeah. and Shuckle and Shuckle and then we have Wingull yeah. okay Sweet Beans but yeah. that's about it guys yeah I'm Bjorn I'm Kieran I'm Ashraf and this is Pokemon. No, no. this is uh, the underlying <laughs> Gotta podcast. Gotta catch him. Oh, it's you and me. <laughs>